Andy Brown for Through the Ropes Boxing with pro middleweight James Richardson. How are you doing, James? Long time since I've spoken to you. Yeah, it's been a while. Yeah, I'm good, thank you, mate. How are you? I'm good, I'm good. Uh, you had a, a win on Saturday night. Now you've had time to reflect. What do you think about that performance? Yeah, I mean, um, the second round stoppage, well, we retired him at the end of the second round with his ribs. Um I haven't really watched it back or anything yet, so it's it's always hard. I mean, initial thoughts were I'd like to have settled into the fight a bit better and done things a little bit different, but I mean, it was a pretty comfortable two rounds stoppage. So yeah, I can't really uh, I can't really complain too much. I heard you say that to Last Bell Boxing. Big shout out to Andy. I've talked to them before. Yeah. Great lads. Uh, there and is that after the fight, didn't you? That you didn't feel quite comfortable in there. What do, you, what do you mean by that? Yeah, I mean, it's like any fight. There's things that you see while you're in there that sometimes you can't get the certain shot off or you haven't set something up quick enough or you've reacted to slow kind of thing. And I don't know, I've said before, it's like that perfectionist mindset. It's not perfect, it's not good enough kind of thing, but I mean, it's a blessing and a curse, really, that but Yeah, it is. I'd like to have got shots off a little bit better and found my range a little bit better, my timing, but I mean, it is what it is at the end of the day, isn't it now? Yeah, and that's the comeback win after suffering a nasty injury on the back of your head, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, and you won loss. How tough was it to get back in or was it fine? You seem a very matter-of-the-fact type of boxer. No, so I mean, I, I've, all I'd know about it, I mean, I got, it was about 20 seconds into that last fight up. Caught around the back of the head and it just completely scrambled me. Like my vision was glazed, my body won't work in properly with me, and then obviously I got took more clean shots in the third and got stopped. But I was never right in there. And then up at, that was at the start of November, and even in January, my head won't. I'd be shadow boxing nice and light, and I'd just start getting light headed and a bit like sort of faint in like November in in the like December and start of January kind of thing and. Yeah, it seemed to really take a grip on me. It took some getting over. Like, I mean, I, the worst thing was just damaged pride. That was the biggest killer, especially. I mean, I've always said in the interviews, I'm not scared to get beat. I'm not scared. We've boxed all the tough journeymen, the big journeymen. We've given away weight plenty of times. I just never expected to get beat in that fashion at that sort of level. And, uh, but yeah, that was. I mean, cuts and bruises heal and that, but that damaged pride kind of thing, that's what uh, that's what really took its toll on me, to be fair. So was that a sweeter victory on Saturday night? Did that taste a bit different? No, nah, it's, it's weird because everyone's saying, like, you're sort of relieved just to have it over with, your back's winning. And no, because, I mean, I boxed as an amateur how many times and... I had how many losses and I still went on to do good things as an amateur, but it's part and parcel of the game, I understand that, but yeah, it's just nice to be sort of back more than anything. Just shake off any question marks over anything. I mean, the first time I got back sparring, I was like obviously nervous to take a punch after having a head injury like that, and then you start getting into it, and then it was a case of, right, can I take a punch with little gloves on again? And just get back competing. So it was just ticking off things to get back to where I wanted to be. One thing I want to touch on for that comeback win, selling tickets on these small, and when you start off as pro, is vital. How important and what does that mean to you that those people came and supported you? It's easy when you yeah. win, but, you know, after you come back, what does yeah, that mean? It's obviously, it's almost everything really in these small or shows. I mean, people that, I mean, the people that obviously always come, it's like families through the gym and people that are obviously loyal. I mean, I, it's never easy selling tickets. It's never fun. We had a lot of people for this fact that already had plans and was away on holidays or whatever. But I've always been quite lucky to have quite a good loyal following of people that we know. So, yeah, I mean, without them, it's obviously impossible to really fight. You're not sell tickets. You ain't going to get put on shows and you ain't going to box. So. It's it's massive, yeah. It's like the unseen thing that no one knows about. 
Yeah, so it's great when they come out for you. Now, you up until then, you'd had a great run, hadn't you? You had six wins, and I don't think you'd lost a round. Which fight was your most satisfying in those six? Oh, well done. Um, probably, I think it was my sixth fight. I boxed um, a lad that was 4-0 and oh at the time. And I think I was 5-0, and oh, he was 4-0. Oh. Um, it was an eight-round fight as well. So, I mean, it was, well, my sixth fight, his fifth fight. And we were both jumping in at eight-rounders. And, uh, yeah, just, that was like sort of a real sweet one. To say that I beat someone that was undefeated and, the first time I'd ever done, obviously, eight rounds. I'd never even sparred eight rounds before. So to go up to that level, to move up to that sort of standard quite early on, that was a that was a real nice, sweet one that year. That was good. And because of your amateur experience, they could push you on. We see that with the girls, don't we, that they, you know, mm. they get pushed on after 10 fights, they're straight in their title fights. Yeah. And you've got that type of experience where there's nothing stopping you, is there, going into decent fights early? No, I mean, we said to um, Carl, obviously Carl Greaves, um, sort of straight away when we turn pro, we, we don't want people that are two weights below me, blown up. Some of that I'm just going to push over in the first round or second round. And I'd like to think I've shown that as well. In, I mean, obviously I've boxed mainly journeymen, but we've boxed journeymen that have got wins by knockout over undefeated prospects. I've given away plenty of weight before on the nights in a couple of fights now and you know even that one where I got beat it was last minute change of opponent we dropped down weight we know exactly what we're getting into he's a very lively dangerous lad he's beat plenty of undefeated lads as well and um, yeah I mean I'm in no rush I know how the game works you can't just jump in at title level and start demanding your way but I'm happy to build I'm happy to do what I have to do I'm happy to just keep learning keep moving on the job and progressing sort of like the traditional way so go for your area national and just see see where i end up and does your dad feel he's learning as well he's on the journey as a pro coach as well he's your coach and manager isn't he um yeah how's he enjoying yeah, it I mean, yeah of course i mean he obviously he's been in the amateur game a long time um but and in terms of the pro game, it's obviously a different sport, really. And But he's obviously main coach. Carl manages and promotes me, but him and Carl work quite closely together with stuff. So it is a bit of a learning curve for us both, but we're both very lucky that we've got someone like Carl, who's, I mean, Carl's reputation speaks for itself. I mean, to have him obviously helping, guiding, advising, all of that sort of stuff, it's, um, yeah, it, it's... It, it helps a lot to learn. And now the other member of the family, Gemma, one of the top amateurs in the com country. I know she had a, a bad injury, didn't she? How's she doing? Yeah, Gemma's good. I mean, she's not been lucky at all with these injuries. I mean, the elbow injury, that's still there. Nowhere near as bad as it used to be like, but I think that's sort of more of a permanent. Then more recently, she ended up, I think she ruptured ligaments in her ankle or some sort of, tears or something in her ankle while she was out running. So she's had um, yeah, a bit of an hard spell at the minute, but she's as good as fully fit. Hopefully there's another qualifier, I think, next month or in a month or two's time. So fingers crossed, she gets nod for that one and she's hitting fitness now and everything. So, yeah, there's no reason why she couldn't and couldn't just go there to qualify. And what's your short-term goals for the next 12 months? I suppose get out as much as possible, but have you got anything to aim for? Yeah, so obviously I just want to be active. I mean, another two, three, four fights this year, whatever. Um, I'm always in the gym, so I always keep myself in decent shape, decent fitness. But I, I'm hoping there's a little bit... There has been talks in the past about moving up to the area title. Um, back end of last year, we were talking about that, obviously... Things went a little bit wrong before that, but yeah, possibly maybe looking for the area title this year as well. And just yeah, I'm I'm one of these where I just take it fight by fight. So they'll tell me what day, what weight, and how many rounds, and that's pretty much what I go off. But yeah, it'd be nice to start moving on, looking for that area title and seeing where we can get to.
Now, I remember when I interviewed you last time, you was an amateur, you, you're just ready to turn into the professional game. And you said, it's what you always wanted to do as a boxer, uh, was to turn professional. What's your overall experience been as being a professional fighter? Yeah, it's been sort of a bittersweet kind of thing. Obviously, I finally signed pro around COVID time as well. So I'd finally got this dream, turned pro, and then I started to wait. I had nothing to get excited about. Um, I mean, although I've been in the game for how long around boxing, I knew all about this ticket sale and stuff, but until you actually experience having to sell tickets for a fight, it, it's it's a nightmare, absolute nightmare. So that's obviously a bit of a downside to it. But yeah, it, 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 like I say, it was everything I ever wanted. I mean, when I grew up as a kid, you didn't watch amateur boxing unless you knew an amateur boxer kind of thing from the gym. Everything was TV shows, pro boxing and it is a very much different sport but it's certainly more enjoyable than for me anyway for amateur boxing longer rounds different style different sort of standard and yeah I certainly can't complain too much well that's brilliant uh, is there any sponsors you'd like to shout out James Wayoni yeah so um, Chris Robinson uh, physiotherapist he He's a bit of a lifesaver, really, to be honest with you. He keeps me upright. Um, Jason Fred Gold, the chairman of Upholstery, they all support me in many ways. And, yeah, obviously, sponsors, just like selling tickets with fans, sponsors are a massive, massive help and massive bonus. So without them guys, it'd be a much, much harder job than it already is. I hope they realise how important they are to young boxers, yeah. aren't they? Vital. Well, massive, massive. Well, all the best, James, and good luck, and uh, look forward to keep watching your career. Brilliant. Thank you very much.